Ann Thomas and uh, Karen Connor, and they'll be presenting on the 1950 census. I just have a few opening remarks. Anne's got the bulk of the program today. I, uh, thank you for inviting us. Um, I'm sure you've all used the census records in your research over the years. And I'm not probably gonna share anything new today, but I just wanted to review a couple things to keep in mind as you um, Look at your family in the 1950 census. Everybody found everybody in 1950 yet? No. Not yeah. not How many of you have found people in the 1950 census? Yeah. So about half. Uh, so. Okay. But you haven't found all your folks yet. Is that because? How many? Yeah. Go ahead. No, is it because you have not looked? Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Well, obviously, it's a great resource to um, continue to track your family through the years. And more importantly, I think it gives you clues on where to look for other records um, for your family. For instance, by 1950 now, um, you'll find a number of yearbooks that are available online, so you might find some pictures of your family as younger folks. Um, maybe some organizational records that are out there and available that you weren't able to access for older generations. Maybe you'll be able to find something um, in this time period and get some extra information. I think those are, are good spots to look. Um, as things become more and more available. The 1950 census isn't gonna be released on microfilm, at least that was the last plan I heard. Um, so it is available obviously through Ancestry Library or if you have a, a personal account, ancestry.com and Family Search. Ancestry says they have it all indexed. I don't think Family Search is planning that yet. Not yet. Um, and I'm sure you know, if you wanted to use our library resources, those databases are available at any of our branches. You don't have to come to special collections. You can use the, the first floor computers here in, at Maine. You can go to Fairmont, you can go to Eastern. They all have access to the genealogy databases. So just a reminder of that. Um, just like earlier, the census is supposed to be a snapshot of your family on a given day, but they gave, in some time periods, they gave months for the census takers to collect the information. And um, in 1950, they gave them a week, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, that sounds right. Um, so in theory, the census taker went to the home, successfully visited with the people in the home, got all the correct data, very neatly wrote the no. information <laughs> on the form completely <laughs> accurately as they were in taught, instructed to do. But in reality, we all know that didn't really happen. Um, somebody wasn't home. For 1950, if somebody wasn't home, they were instructed to go back later and no matter where they would have fallen in the regular census pages, they were to go to page 70 to record people that were not at home. So if you're looking at a, a neighborhood or a, a, a grouping of an ED of forms and it stops at 37 and suddenly skips to 70, don't be alarmed and think that they've left out a number of pages. Those were all the people in that ED, and then they had to skip to page 70 to catch the people that were not at home that day. So something to just be aware of. And you know what an ED is? No. Enumeration, Enumeration district. district. So that's <laughs> the territory they had to cover. And I'm sure, I mean, we have, we all kind of realized that in the 1860s and 70s, there were a lot of language barriers. I don't think that's changed necessarily today. I think you have to take that into account in 1950 as well. So just keep that in mind. 
um, that people may not have understood the questions. Um, the language may not have been clear. I mean, I always used to say like in those olden, olden times, if you don't have any teeth, it's kind of hard to spit out your name. <laughs> and probably it's not quite so bad in 1950s, but um, you still have to keep all those things in mind when you're looking for your family names. Um, of course, you know that the, from 1790 to 1840, the US Marshals were responsible for filling out the census records. Um, and then from 50 to 70, um, they added some extra property values and they did all the heads of household plus the family members and so forth. Um, the first time they hired enumerators was 1880. And um, then they got even more details added. And um, by 1950 now, the, there was a lot of training that went into it. They, they trained the trainers. They were trying to get as accurate a picture as possible and um, created a, a, a nice snapshot in time for our neighborhoods and families. Um, just a couple little, um, oh, it was a whole month. I have it right here. The 1950, they began April 1st, and it was mostly completed by May 1st. So it was a whole month they gave them, not a week. I was wrong. In 1950, it included um, schedules for uh, about 72% of the Indian reservations. So if you have any Native Americans that you're seeking to do research on, you may have some success, but we remember 72% isn't everybody, so they're not all represented. Um, the National Archives did not film all the forms. They did not film the backside of form P1, which was about the structures on the property, which I think is kind of too bad because that would have been pretty interesting. Um, they, they just simply didn't film in the 1960s when they were microfilming the, the actual originals. Nor did they microfilm the ag questionnaires, the agriculture questionnaires, nor the infant cards, because they felt like that information was available in other formats. I'm sad about that. They destroyed all the original forms in the 1960s, okay, so you cannot, they do not exist. The only exception to that is form P8, which is the Indian reservation schedules, and the schedule is from the Pacific Ocean Islands, it's like Guam and things like that. There were 10 districts in Ohio and Michigan that participated in a self-enumeration, so if you happen to have relatives or ancestors in those areas, their forms are going to look a little bit different. The examples that I found online were from, uh, one was from Hamilton County, Ohio, and I'll have the exact districts. Um, but they were a little more in depth and that was their uh, experiment with whether people could do a self-enumeration and how successful that would be. Um, as I mentioned already, if no one was at home, the enumerators tried again later. Oh, I lied. They recorded it on sheet 71, not sheet 70. Sorry. 71. What was it? Those 71. When somebody wasn't at home, uh -huh. they skipped to page 71 the oh. next time they recorded them. I told you earlier it was page 70. Okay. Um, that was just their protocol. I thought these were interesting facts about women. They did not ask females if they had served in the military during past conflicts. They only asked yeah. currently wow. serving females. So if you were in the military currently, they, they asked you then. But they didn't ask any females who were not currently serving. They only asked about birth, but divorced or separated. The top occupants were stenographers, 
secretaries, retail sales, teachers, bookkeepers, and factory workers, particularly apparel factory. Recently, the most recent census that has been uh, the information that shared um, the top occupation is registered nurse, followed by teacher, secretary, administrative assistant, manager, and customer service rep. And then on the census.gov website, you could they have lots of cool facts and interesting things. They give a state by state comparison to a lot of these different things, which if your ancestors, you know, they left Iowa and moved on to wherever, you can do kind of a cool um, comparison. They have uh, a genealogy series available, which some of the modules are still relevant. Some of them were preparing for the release, so they're obsolete, but um, some of the modules, modules are relevant. And they're, you can watch them on YouTube, so um, that's kind of fun. And then they also gave kind of a different way of looking at our, our family um, forms that we do. They have, so I printed off just a couple of examples. They have some different ones, but instead of always focusing on the dates, the birth, the marriage, the death, the where, the wow, the blah, 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 they're suggesting, why don't you just have the name and the birthday and then the first census that that individual would have appeared in. And maybe this is something that for a newer person or if you're teaching a younger person in your family, trying to get them hooked in <coughs> genealogy, this might be an option and say, okay, if this person is born in 1925, or 19, that was bad example, 1926, what's the first census that they're going to show up in? Just to get them thinking, you know, okay, there's no point in me looking in 1920, that's not necessary. So it's just a different way of looking at things. But um, I thought it was kind of interesting. And, and they do have a lot, as I said, on that census.gov website. They're really pushing um, using these records in schools and providing resources for young people and teachers and homeschool families. So um, if you know anybody in that situation, that is definitely a resource to check into. So any questions about that little brief overview? Okay, well, then I'm going to turn it over to the capable hands. Oh. All right. I figured most of you by now have looked at the 1950 census. What, what? I, don't know. I don't know how to do this. So. Okay. Um, Ancestry.com has the whole thing. Okay. Family search is about halfway there. They had a goal of flag day, which as we all know, is June 14th. That was their goal for family search to get done with their um, indexing. And they didn't make it. There is a map on their website if you wanna look it up and it is about halfway done. So they are making a lot of progress. If you do not have Ancestry, um, you can come down to the library, like, uh, I don't know, is it Catherine or Karen said that all of the locations have Ancestry.com. If you don't live in Davenport and you don't feel like coming to Davenport, or you're just up for an adventure, Bettendorf has it, Eldridge has it, um, a lot of the local <laughs> libraries have Ancestry.com. Um, if you know the address of where the person lived in 1950. I do have a method that you can look it up yourself, but I really encourage you, just use the ancestry. It's so much easier. You don't have to go searching here and searching there to figure it out. So. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay, when I understand with ancestry, there's like three different levels of subscriptions. Yeah. Okay, which level do you have? Do you have the ones where you can go across the, the creek to find people in Germany or whatever? No. I personally do subscribe to Ancestry. We have the basic, which is the cheapest, runs about $200 a year, and it's US only. 
at Ancestry.com Library Edition or Ancestry Library Edition, they do have the international here. So if I want to do international, I want those German records or those English records or whatever. I just come down here and look it up. That's what I was wondering. It saves me a couple hundred dollars a year. Yeah. All right. Some of you may remember 1950. <laughs> no. I don't know. Most of you have probably just heard stories about 1950, like me. But this illustration from FamilySearch.org it shows some of the little tidbits about 1950. Might help if I change the screen for you. Um, the most popular song was a popular song was the Tennessee Waltz. <laughs> Cost of living, a first class stamp was three cents. What are we up to now? 58. Or 58. 58. A gallon of gas, 27 cents. <laughs> we won't even ask how much we're up to now. 314. 314. Oh, you've got a deal. Costco. Oh. Um, World Series, the New York Yankees. Any, any surprise there? Mm -hmm. You know, science, the leaf blower was invented. <laughs> now there's a handy tool that we're still using 72 years later. You know. Cinema, the top grossing film was, was Cinderella, but she didn't win the best film if that was all about Eve. So these are just fun little facts from 1950, just to refresh your memory if you were around or to give you some insight if you weren't. On the census, and Karen alluded to it, you need to read the notes. The enumerators were very much encouraged to write notes regarding um, any unusual entries or irregular situations. And a lot of the information regarding the enumerated notes are found on, the, on a website that I found that was posted by Amy Johnson Crow. She's a genealogist. So if you want to see, see the originals here. These census reports, they're probably too blurry to read. You really don't have to read them. All I really wanted to point out was where are you gonna find notes? So you might find them up near the top. You might find them in the middle. Uh, this one is one that I happen to find. And, um, and, and Karen said they said lines, sheet 71. Um, mine was sheet 75. I don't know why, oh, yeah. because why the difference? Okay. I don't know. But they wrote in there that no one at home sees sheet number 75, lines 19 and 20. So they gave us hints that um, you know if they're not where you think they should be, maybe they really were there, but they got recorded elsewhere. Um, Amy Johnson Crow, she found some great examples of notes. So it says here, Laura Husinger was listed in Violet Township, Fairfield County, Ohio, but her name was crossed out and a two appears next to her name. And if you look at the notes, the section, you find out she died. So they put her in, I don't know why, because if she wasn't alive on April 1st, how did she get in in the first place? But my guess is somebody they interviewed said, you know, who else lives here? Well, they just forgot. Oh, yeah, mom died. <laughs> or maybe they hadn't been notified yet. <laughs> Another interesting note. Um, this man, incapable of working much, his hands will not open or close due to a fall in, the, in a fire about 15 years ago. I thought that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. that, uh, a census enumerator is reporting this. Here's another one. This man is probably 63 or, or older. His wife gave me his age, and she listed it as 43. <laughs> Just a reminder, read the notes. These were some wonderful examples. I found a few notes. They were far less interesting than the ones that the crow found. 
But the point is look and read the notes. So if you see any, see if there's some additional clues to your whoever you're searching for that you might find. Another thing, report errors. And you are going to find errors. How many have found errors in prior census reports? No. Yeah. yeah. This is an example. This is my. This is actually my uncle. Um, so look and see what this says. It says there's Donald V. Schmidt, and you get down near the bottom, and it says household members. Donald V. Schmidt, Theolus A. Schmidt, Lois. You think so? I think yeah. so too. Yeah. And I happen to know her because she was my aunt. And yes, her name was Lois. So how do you report it? Aha, uh -huh. oh, on okay. that same page. Okay. I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. On that same page that that recap was, it says, thanks to our proprietary handwriting recognition technology, they tried, they did the best they could. But if you look on the lower left, you'll say, Report a problem. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So guess what I did? Yes. What would you consider an error? I mean, my grandparents were from Mexico. Okay. And so my grandma's name was Jesus. Okay. You look at it, it's Jesus. Yes. So she got tired of explaining Jesus. So <laughs> she just changed it to Jesse. All right. If it was recorded on the census as Jesse, yeah. it is not a problem. If they recorded it as J-E-F-F-E, it is a problem. Okay. So did they transcribe it correctly? If they transcribed it correctly, it's not a problem. In my particular case, looking at Aunt Lois, they did mistranscribe it and it is Lois. So I sent him an error message and said, hey, it's Lois, it's not Thois, mm -hmm. you know, and they fixed it. They've already okay. fixed it. And I, and I, it wasn't that long before they got it right. So if you have a chance to repair or correct, report the stuff. They are listening apparently. All right, check out the neighborhood. We've all done genealogy. We know we should check the pages before and after. So <clears throat> see how, who else lives near the person that you're researching, All right? This is an example. Uh, this is my Aunt Lorraine and her husband is Weldon, but he went by Jack. So Aunt Lorraine, Uncle Jack, and I never knew how they met. You know, I never thought to ask her. She's three years older than he is. And so they went to the same high school because they lived in Muscatine. There's only one high school in Muscatine. And um, because of the age difference, they would not have had classes together. They would not have hung out together. Now, this is at one end of the block. The other end of the block, if you look up, there's Schmidt, Weldon, Laura. Those are her parents. And you look next door, Katra Paul, Cottrell Weldon. His brother lived next door to her parents. Now, I can't <clears throat> verify that that's how they met, but I strongly suspect that because his brother mm -hmm. was neighbors with her parents, and her parents had lived in that house for years, and she lived in that house until she got married that I strongly suspect that's how they came to know each other. Um, so you do need to look around. You might find stuff that's kind of interesting. Let me see if I can get my page turned here. All right. Um, who are the name of the children? Now, these were the children that your ancestors would have played with. It's who they would have gone to school with. It's, who they would have known. And a lot of the times these were lifelong um, relationships. So look around, who was in the neighborhood? Did they live next door or down the street? Looking for the neighbor children might give you some insight as to the person you're looking for. So check out the neighborhood, depending upon who you listen to. I have heard people say, 
look three pages before <laughs> and three pages after who are you looking at. I've also heard people say, look 10 pages before and 10 pages after who you are looking at. Pick your own, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, but I am going to tell you, you should look around. Karen said, you should go to census.gov. And you should, because we found, I didn't, I shouldn't say, Karen found us a game called Kahoot. And this is number one. In, 19, in 2020, the population was 331 million, an increase of 119% from 1950. What was the population during the 1950 census? What do you think? 115. 115? The last one? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Because I don't remember. Oh, About 110. Yeah. The 1950 census questionnaire had 20 questions on a short form. The 1950, I don't know what I said. How many questions were asked in the 2020 census? Any guess? Anybody remember filling it out? No. <laughs> I didn't fill it out. My husband filled it out for both of us. So I never saw it. I don't think there's many. No, I'm going right. to say nine. Yeah. Nine? Ding, 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 ding. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah, those are those. Got it right. Okay. People in over 140 million housing units counted were counted in the 2020 census. How many homes were visited in 1950? I guess. Can't hear you. That's what I said. 90. 90? Oh, 45. Wow, 45. See how much we've grown in 70 years? And From you probably 45 think. Household, 45 million households to 140 million. And more yeah. people lived together in 1950s than what they That's do now. Probably more very families. True. That's probably very true. More generations which were packed in one. Univac, one. The first non-military computer used after the 1950 count weighed 16,000 pounds and used 5,000 vacuum tubes. True. True. True, true or false? Yeah. True. Very true. You're right. Very true. Can you imagine that? Yes, the median age of people counted in the 1950 census. Kent, younger than 39. I was kind of surprised by this one. Uh, younger than 39. Say, say, younger than 39, it said. I was thinking. 30, 20, 20, 30. 30. I heard of 30. We're going for 30. That was a lot younger than I expected. I don't know why. But over 15 million women worked in 1950. How many women aged 16 and over worked in 2019? Mm -hmm. Any guesses? 50. 75. 75. We're all over the page. 30. We're all over the place. Okay. 75 million. So it grew from 15 million 70 years, 69 years prior, up to 75 million. Yeah, stay at home moms. About 91% of people aged 25 and over completed four years of high school or more in 2020. That's pretty cool. What was the percentage in 1950? 
34. We've come a long way. All right, the center of the population. They calculate this every 10 years, and it started out west, out east. And just to show you a bigger picture of that. Yeah, so you can see it's twirling across and just to give you an idea. So we started in Maryland, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, 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 Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> Finally, we hit Illinois in 1950. We stayed there a couple of times and we moved on to Missouri for the last four. The 1950 center of population was Clay County, Illinois. Where was the center of population in 2020? Parkville, Missouri. No, I Texas, know, yeah. Texas. Again, we're all over the map. Oh, Hartville, Missouri. It just keeps creeping west. The fun thing would be the 2030. At least I think that would be. All right. In 1950, about 70% of the people, 14 and over, were married. And look at how low they set that, 14. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what is the percentage today? Uh, 30. I say that. 30. No one gets married. No one gets married. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we're, we're out of touch here. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. Okay. Last question. Average family income in 1950 was $3,300 a year. What's the estimated median in 2019? I'm going to say 30. 45. 45. 30. 30. Karen and I knew we were working on this. This was going to be a short program. So it is a short program, but we each are more than happy to answer any questions you might have about the 1950 census. Yeah, yeah. If I've got a problem with the 50, 50 census, I can't find my father. Okay. He should be only 16 years old. Okay. I know he's not married okay. because he didn't, him and my mother didn't marry until 1952. Okay. If he wasn't home at the time that the census was taken with his parents, would he have been on one of the other pages or? He may have been. He may have been. If the parents were home, they probably would have answered for him. If the parents were not home, he might be on that other page. Well, I know my grandmother would have been home. She only had a three-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you'd expect him to be home. Although she could have been at the grocery store today. No. Um, but yeah, they he should show up someplace. Now, have you tried Ancestry? I've tried Ancestry. I've tried uh, the uh, looking it up uh, the archives the and uh, can't find him. But I didn't have the information about looking back oh, into the yeah. uh, other pages that, yeah. where he might be or look in the notes. My grandmother may have mentioned something that he's working there somewhere so uh, um, i will do that okay but i hope you can find it. it i do too i found mom she's in illinois oh okay. so i know that they they work together or anywhere yeah. close yeah. at that time but uh yeah. in 50 but they've had her my parent mom's parents must have moved back to the area where she basically married and, and had started having kids but yeah. uh, anybody else it doesn't have to be a question just be a comment um yeah. they haven't came up with a form to tell you what each column says 
Yeah, they have. They have? Yeah. Do we have one? It's on the website. Oh, on the, the, on the gov. census. Oh, so gov. I just Googled 1950 census questions and I've gotten it. I'm just curious what information is in there. I haven't even looked at it. It is, there is, there's a ton of questions, but they only asked all of the questions of about 5% of the people. And they asked more than half of the questions to 20% of the people. And the other 80%, they only asked about, I don't know, a handful, a couple of handfuls of questions. So. Just, just depended probably on how lazy the census taker was. You well, there was no, only it's 10 questions. Because there were certain lines. Yeah, there were yeah. certain lines that they yeah. said, ask additional questions. Um, I don't know if you can see this. I don't have a copy on a screen. No, there's a. They had a little nit over here. You see that where it mm -hmm. sticks out? And those, they asked those questions. And then there were a couple of other, I don't remember what the issue is, that then they asked some of those questions. Oh, so yeah. yeah. So the 1940 census has a lot of questions. I don't remember how many. Yeah. Is there any change from the 1940 uh, census in terms of questions that they asked? Yes. They always ask different questions every year. The only thing you can count on is name of head whole, head, of household, head yeah. of household, thank you. The name of the head of the household and where they took the census. That's the only thing that you can count on every <laughs> census report. After that, they change the questions every year. Oh, geez. Yeah. Well, then you can't compare. <laughs> no, it's hard to compare. Yeah. Although they did kind of track, you know, certain things. Um, all the way through. Yeah, they, once they started adding actual ages, they kept it. Once they started oh, okay. adding everybody's name, they kept it. You know, um, some things kind of came and went. I love the 1900 census. Mm -hmm. It tells you the month and year that someone was born. Well, they didn't keep that. They just went back to age. <laughs> that yeah. would be great because my aunt, I don't know when she was born, um, someplace in Iowa, either yeah. Muscatine or Davenport or Fairport, I don't know. But anyway, there's a discrepancy about how old she is. So mm -hmm. if I look at the 1940 census, she's four. And if I look at the 1950, then I can confirm what her real age is. Right. Yeah. So I, I think she's taking the younger age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Yes. And, and you know, basically, people kind of fudge their age, and it wasn't just the women. It, keep that in mind. The men did the same thing. The earlier census was sometimes they just didn't even know. Yeah, right. that's very true. That wasn't such big people. Yeah, yeah. Hi. In the 1940 census, they have a marking on the line. The person who answered the questions did they do something like that in 50 also? I have not noticed that, and I have not read anything saying that. And I've read, I don't know, a couple of those articles. No, Fair I'm not. Yeah. Anything else? No. <laughs> Well then, go back and buy a lot of uh, a lot of books and magazines, or take the free maps. You need to do that and look forward to next month's program with Catherine. Okay, thank you. Yeah.